you're tuned into Repco Muscle Garage, the home of New Zealand's toughest muscle cars, hot rods and street machines. Proudly brought to you by Repco, in association with Mount Shop, Maguire's and Rislo. It's a well-worn cliche, but if ever an event needed little introduction, it'd be this one, Repco Beach Hop. The five-day festival is an icon. The cars are no doubt the stars here, but the support acts are strong. With a soundtrack of good old-fashioned rock and roll and the stunning Coromandel Peninsula on backdrop duties, 2021's event also notched up a bit of a milestone, Repco Beach Hop's 21st birthday, and this party comes pre-packaged. Not doing a yardie, <laughs> not doing it anyway. This is our celebration, like having everybody here to, to party with us, enjoy the music, the cars, the atmosphere, just part of our lifestyle, so we live it and breathe it. Still excited about it after 21 years and just seeing all the happy smiley faces, new cars, the noise, the reaction, met so many people today who have never been here before and just blowing them away. That's what it's all about, you know, and maybe next year they'll buy a car and instead of being a spectator, they'll be an entrant. That's what you want to see. It is massive and it's still growing even after COVID and everybody uh, comes to it and enjoys it, loves it and even on a wet morning like we had this morning, look how many cars are here. There's nothing else like it. Beach Hop is just amazing. The people, where they've come from, the atmosphere, and it just gets better and better and better. It's not about coming to win the raffle or anything like that, or win a prize or anything. It's just the atmosphere of the whole thing. The, the town's just perfect for it. It's heaven really, it's you know, it's a beautiful place and you can just sit down at a pub and even if you're not even into cars, you know, it's just car after car and there's lots of things to do. It's a perfect place just to come for a holiday and chill out. We even bought a batch down here because we enjoy it so much, so it works out really well for us. And we get all the friends come and stay and I've got a lot more friends than I had before. <laughs> Absolutely insane. I waited 21 years to come to this. It's my first one and it hasn't disappointed. It's just out of this world and I, I, I'll rant and rave until God, I put my home with the nappies being changed by my kids. Putting a, a grillion photos on Facebook and telling everyone they need to come. It is, it's, it's once in a lifetime opportunity to see something super cool. It's not hard to see what all the fuss is about. The hop started out as a nostalgia rock and roll festival with just a side order of automobile. But my, how those tables have turned. Sure, the signs are all still there and Repco Beach Hop still proudly celebrates the music and the moves of the 50s and 60s. But this bunch, some 1,200 strong, well, they may just have other ideas. Because it's a celebration of the 50s and 60s, we try to limit the vehicles that enter to be pre-1972. Um, we may take American cars up to 85 because of the culture, like with some of the Mustangs, etc. But we really want the vehicles to reflect what the era was like back in the time. So what do you have seen on the streets in New Zealand back in the 50s and 60s? COVID did a number on last year's hot, pushing it back to late November. So, coming in hot on its heels just four short months later, and with the threat of lockdown still looming, a lower entrant turnout would have been excusable for number 21. Seems there was little need for concern, however. The event was sold out in a record two days flat, and come late March, the Coromandel Peninsula's winding roads would once again play host to one great-looking traffic jam. You know, I look at a modern car and I could not tell one from the other really, you know. I have to look at the badge. The old cars have got so much character, style, um, they look different from each other, you know. Like a, you know, a 57 Chevy looks a lot different from a 57 Ford, for example. And the good thing about it is, you know, you, you can do what you want with them. What your, what your own personal taste, what your budget is, you build it how you like it, you enjoy it, you get that kick out of it. The sound, the power, it's just, um, you put the whole lot together and. Welcome to the car hobby lifestyle. Everyone's got slightly different perceptions of what they deem as being the ultimate vehicle, but um, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's what you think at the end um, and enjoy it. No good if they all look the same. Yeah, <laughs> they're more than bloody well. A lot of us are probably a little bit older and we can recall history and we all wanted an American car. And I think as we got older, we purchased one and now the younger people are coming along too which is really really good uh, be it a hot rod or a classic car it really can turn somebody around in the right direction being able to see things move 
hear them going creates a whole atmosphere on its own. We all like cars, we all like V8s, whatever. I, I like everything. Truly amazing, yeah. Some very clever people out there. It never ceases to amaze me how many people have cars, you know. There's so many people that have brought cars specifically for beach shop, and it's just ridiculous. It just keeps growing every year. You wonder where it can get to, you know. It's really spurred a movement in New Zealand for people to get back into cars and enjoy them again and drive them. And drive them they do. While Whangamata is the town that gets its name on the poster, it's the sharing type. In fact, a big chunk of Repco Beach Hop's first three days are spent heading in the opposite direction, with massive convoys setting their sights for the neighbouring towns of Waihi, Thames and Onimana. Welcome to day one, the Go Waihi warm-up party. No longer the gentle ease into proceedings that it once was, Waihi's warm-up comes in hot. A first chance to check out new creations making their debut, fresh imports and plenty of repeat hop favourites. And while the cars may come and go, Beach Hop's real regulars might just be the people behind the wheel. Uh, yeah, 15. 15 Beach Hops. We've missed a couple. Obviously last year was a bit of a muck up, but uh, apart from that and having twins, um, you know, we've tried to come every year and it's, it's magic. It's our number one getaway. It's a 1970 RT Charger, uh, running a 440. It's got this scat pack set up in it, so Dana 60 rear end and a, and a four speed manual. So. Just have a thing for Mopars, yeah, I, was, I love them. So I've had a, had a few Coronets and the uh, Charger was always my end goal. Everyone saw Dukes of Hazard, so uh, you know, we all, we all wanted to head in that direction. So eventually working my way through cars, I've, I've, I've gotten there finally. Yeah, I was a, a sort of a panic buy. I'd lost a, had a couple of cars bought off me and, and I thought, oh, this is my chance to get a charger. And I got on the internet and, and, and had a real good look around and nothing on eBay and nothing on the other stuff. And yeah, put in the year and what I wanted manual and, and searched and searched and I found one. And uh, yeah, that was it. Luckily, I grabbed it before everyone else did. Four speed manual. Uh, a bit hard on the on the leg and the beach shop traffic, but uh, nah, she's good fun and exactly what I wanted. It is a bit addictive. Yeah, they're sort of a standalone crowd, the the Mopo guys. And yeah, once you're there, it's uh, it's hard to look at anything else. But um, yeah, there's so many other candies out there. It's a bit tempting once you've once you've got one, you and you you think, oh, what else is there? But uh, no, I, I definitely on my number one list is definitely the Mopo. Another bitten bad by the Mopar bug is Rodney Holland, back with the Holy Grail, a numbers matching, Hemi powered four speed 66 charger. Well, I had a Hurst Olds for many years before this car and I loved it to bits. But my heart is Mopar, yes. Hey, I'd like both, but you can't always, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And uh, yeah, this ticks all the boxes for me. There was only 250 odd of the 426 Hemi four-speed ones made, so she's pretty rare. And it's, I, I believe it's the only one in the country, but there's plenty of charges here of this shape, but not with that motor. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Big elephant. Well, there's a friend of mine, Owen Gregg. He's a Mopar guru. He's got a friend in Texas. He said to Owen, there's a cheap Hemi car in California for sale. And I said, well, there's no such thing. But I got online, I found it straight away, rung this guy up and he basically told me it was in primer, which is obviously not the ideal situation. Primer and guide coat, right? Hides everything. But he was adamant that it was very good under the body. Just one little repair, which he said his body shop guy did, wasn't happy with it. So I got it back to New Zealand and I stripped it back to bare steel and everything he said was true. It was, it was really good. So I spent probably four hours doing a little bit of panel repair and that was it. So it's a super good car, yeah. Running his own high-end restoration workshop, Rodney's charger was never going to remain in primer for long. While the 426 was balanced and blueprinted before the Dodge made its debut at 2017's Beach Hop. Honestly, I, I pinch myself, but you know, I feel I'm very lucky to have it. It's original, everything is, everything is stock on the car. The colour, the motor gearbox, all matching numbers. So yeah, yeah, it's cool.
advanced protection of hybrid ceramic. Whoa. Now in three easy to use products. An original spray wax, now as a liquid wax, and a spray detailer. Meguiar's hybrid ceramic family with advanced SiO2 technology. Meguiar's ceramic made easy. Rislo has been in engines almost as long as engines have been in cars. Why? Because from then until now, there's never been a perfectly clean fuel. This means every time you fill up, you're adding pollutants and contaminants to your fuel system. Rislo Fuel Injector Cleaner can cure those woes and help save your engine. Rislo Fuel Injector Cleaner adds an upper cylinder lubricant, providing double the cleaning power out of the same bottle. We know something about aging well, so when we say it's your engine's fountain of youth under a screw top, you can count on it. Rislo is the original engine tune-up. Available at participating stores near you. You're tuned into Repco Muscle Garage, the home of New Zealand's toughest muscle cars, hot rods and street machines. Proudly brought to you by Repco, in association with Mount Shop, Maguire's and Rislo. We're back at Repco Beach Hop 21, a five day festival where the clocks get wound back and the roads of the Coromandel Peninsula again resemble a golden era of New Zealand motoring. Think Happy Days or American Graffiti, but with Kiwi accents and 2021 oil prices. With just four months gone since the last hop, 2020's event pushed back by COVID, there were a few changes in order so the festival didn't feel like a record on repeat. The most notable? Thursday's destination switcheroo from Fitianga to Thames. Having an event in November and one in March, we didn't want them to be identical because that would be boring. So we looked at the format and thought, well, let's go to a different town, Fidianga. Um, it's been fantastic. We've done three or four there, but we've never been to Thames. And uh, it's on the Coromandel. There's actually a beach in Thames heading up the coast. A little bit muddy, but it's a beautiful town, a historic, longest, straightest main street of a town in New Zealand. So why not? So lots of new little things that we've done to bring to the festival, to keep it fresh, keep us excited so we're not doing the same old, same old. And um, we'll be looking at doing the same over the coming years as well. I just gotta get these crazy ideas in my head and go, how are we gonna do that? Can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. How? We don't know, but we'll just make it happen. A formula you wouldn't want to mess with too much comes in the form of an Oldsmobile Super 88 Holiday Coupe. Terry's 57 instead opts for the mild custom approach. The old's head turning looks are thanks to clever use of cosmetics, not slicing and dicing. Just look at the lines, mate. It's, uh, it's gotta stand out to you. It's got those rounded curves. It's, uh peels and the shiny chrome, good stuff. Uh, about nine years ago over in Australia, I pulled it off a guy I knew here. He decided he was going to sell it and his wife didn't speak to him for about three weeks after that. Wouldn't speak to me either, mind you. But she eventually came around. Be a mild custom use, especially with a paint job. And, uh, she's sitting about two inches lower in the front than um, factory, of course, but that's that's it. She's pretty much uh, as she rolled off the assembly line. Yep. Drives good, mate, just like a 63-year-old does. But um, you, you got to watch her a bit in the corners because she ain't no rocket ship. Well, in saying that, it's uh, yeah, straight lining. You wouldn't like to try and catch it on foot. From mild to wild. While Terry's Olds is a great example of a custom look achieved largely with a spray gun, creating Josh's tail-dragging chopped 41 Buick Special called for something a lot more invasive. I'd seen the car years and years ago and uh, in the Hop Up magazine as well. Um, there's a feature there and then, uh, well, you know, as you do when you're following the web and then it actually popped up in Aussie uh, when I was looking at cars in Aussie. Dude had it there, but um, something to do with the roof chop and his state or something, he couldn't get it legal. Been for sale for quite a while over there and yeah, sort of worked the deal and got it across the ditch. So it's been chopped like four inches in the rear, three in the front. Um, the roof's actually been shifted forward a couple inches. The yeah, body's been sectioned and then all the rockers have all been mucked around with as well. A lot gone into it. I sort of, I don't know a hell of a lot of history on the car. I've just been reading up through magazines and speaking to people who know about it and that. With its severely altered ride height and even a couple of windows MIA, it's hard to imagine the 41 in factory form. Yeah, well, they're pretty grandma looking, definitely, uh, you know, something you'd look at that and a lot of people wouldn't know that it was the same car. 
yet to find one, like it'll be cool to have them parked next to each other, eh? But you can sort of see where it's come from, you know, but yeah, a lot of things have changed, eh? So it's got a small block Chev and turbo 350 um, and a 10 bolt rear, Chevy rear, so it's yeah, good, good running gear and good cruiser. It's got bags in that thing, um, that QS setup, so it's actually really nice to ride, you have to pump it up to a good height, but um, with all the running gear and stuff, it hauls along nicely, like it's, we've been down Kaikoura and then up here is, you know, eight, eight or nine hour drive and it's no worries, eh? Just the vision a little bit because you sit so low and, you know, seeing out over the front's a little bit hard, but no, nah, she's a cool cruiser. One thing to have it in the shed, but I reckon they've got to be used, eh? Put miles on and get them out there. There are some pretty bad rides coming out, but yeah, it's, it's definitely different, you know. You're not going to see another one like it at a show and that, so no, it's cool. Turns heads as well. With the Waihi warm-up party and Thursday's Thames cruise done and dusted, Friday would see the hop sites turn to neighbouring bay on Imana and its picturesque beachfront reserves. The Castrol Edge Thunder Cruise hasn't had a great run with weather of late, with threatening forecasts or the impact of heavy overnight rain looming large in the background. Fortunately, it's always blown over just in time, more often than not resulting in little more than a passing shower to contend with. Well, that was the case until this year. The torrential rain would eventually make way for blue skies, and when the crowds braved their way out from the safety of shelter, they were as surprised as we were to still find a sizeable Onimana turnout, albeit one short of a few roadsters. AMC's Rambler enjoys a very local connection, having been assembled just down the road in Thames and sold new here. Sean's, however, isn't one of them and quite an oddity being a left hook factory six. Okay, so it's a 69 AMC Rebel. Uh, came to New Zealand in 72, and uh, obviously had a, a few owners throughout its time here. I had a, uh, a now ex-wife who told me I could get back into uh, some old tin if I only used the money from selling the four-wheel drive I had, which was a Lada Neva, so I didn't have a lot of money. And luckily enough, that little thing there came up uh, for the right price, and uh, I bought it sight unseen, which was sort of a mistake. Uh, it was like 50 shades of yellow. Uh, it sat about uh, seven inches higher than it does now. It was pretty rough. It made funny noises when you drove it. And of course, I'd told her, we will buy this car and we don't need to do anything to it. So I got in a little bit of trouble at that stage, but not as much as I was going to get into a bit further along the build. I just liked the look of it. And, uh, and that was really the only plan. I had a mate who was getting married about 12 months later and he wanted it as a wedding car. So I decided now's probably the time to strip it down and get it painted. Uh, which I did, was going to change colour, but kept it the yellow, which I'm really glad I did. It's, it's a pretty uh, popular colour. And then probably about another six months after that, I was coming back from a car show in the Wairarapa and it started making horrible noises. Six cracked pistons, and that's when the big rebuild started. Uh, and yeah, that was, that was sort of almost divorce number two. At that stage, after finding out how rare the car was, I spoke to a chap in the States who has a, an AMC, a big, massive American parts depot, it's called. After talking to him, he's got his feelers all around the world. He said it's quite a rare unit, being uh, American assembled, left-hand drive, and still a six-cylinder. So I was contemplating repairing it with a V8, decided to keep the six to keep it as original as I could. I'm glad I did it, but I probably could have had a four-engined V8 uh, Rambler for, for the same price. By now, I'm married again. Okay, because you do that. Um, and yeah, my wife, for some reason, seemed to think airbagging a car was about a $1,000 job. Uh, it's not. Uh, so Cruising Customs and Palmy took care of the job for me, uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, we've got a ride tech system all through it. It's all Bluetooth and uh, I control everything from a phone and a remote and the dongle on the dash. So it's a pretty cool setup. It was just a straight suspension swap. I could have got it right on the ground, but it would have been chassis modifications and all that. And I, I didn't want to go to that hog and cut it up. It's just a cruiser. It's just a really fun cruiser for my, my kids and me, uh, my wife. We just can jump in and go everywhere and yeah, not have the national debt tied up in a car, which is cool. Everyone would love a nice 57 Chevy or a 64 and a half Mustang or you know 64 Impala. They're cool cars. They're cool cars, and uh, I love them. And I'd love a garage full of them. But I'm pretty much guaranteed when I take that car out, it's going to be the only one like it. I mean, I don't know how many cars are here. It might be 1,500 cars at each shop. That's one of two Ramblers here, and it's the only Rebel.
Friday marked the last of the three Coromandel cruise days, but it would seem this lot were far from done. The low and slow laps hinted a relaxed pace, but this is the calm before the storm. Pop Saturdays in Whangamata are unlike any other, a carefully orchestrated succession of parades and static displays set to live music and stage shows with another wave of spectators expected to swamp the seaside holiday town to push the numbers out well past 100,000. Ripco Beach Hop 21 might be short on its usual influx of overseas attendees, but safe to say the locals were out in force. Yo, I feel like a Kiwi that's had his wings clipped, but this is as good as it gets. I mean, look at the venue. Look at the, the faces, the cars, the people. This is, this is our town. You know, and that, how good is it to do it in your own town to a world standard? You know, we, we do miss our international visitors that used to come to the festival and we see on social media that they're so disappointed they can't be here. But um, it's really good to do it at home, that's for sure. Be sure to tune in next week for part two of our Repco Beach Hop coverage. Your ride needs some love, we've got you sorted. Thanks to our mates at Meguiar's, we have this massive complete car care pack worth over $760 to give away, plus a $500 mount shop voucher to keep the underside ship shape too. And to top it off, one year subscription to NZV8 magazine. To enter, simply head to themotorhood.com and hit the Repco Muscle Garage link. The winner will be drawn at the end of the series. Easy. During this year's Repco Supercars Championship season, the garage is your go-to place for all things supercars and motoring. Exclusive content, special guests, and your chance to win amazing experiences at the track. Register your interest today. Repco Muscle Garage was proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. Mount Shop, undercar specialists. Meguiar's, people who love cars, love Meguiar's and Rislo, high performance additives for high performance vehicles. <laughs>